In this video, we're going to be looking at the final question of the Unit 1 sample paper for the NXL IAS Chemistry course. And this is question 23, focusing on the alkenes. So the first sentence tells us a reminder that the alkenes contain a double bond between our two carbon atoms. And we're given some information about propene and asked about their reactions. So we've got one reaction with an unknown reagent and catalyst to form an alkane one reaction with acidified potassium manganate to form compound Y, and one reaction with HCl to form major product Z. So let's look at the questions. First of all, we want to be able to give the names of reagent W and catalyst X. So this, we need to think about what it is, is an addition reaction. In particular, this is a hydrogenation reaction. So we know that we must be adding hydrogen, so our reagent is going to be hydrogen, and it specifically asks for the names, not the formulas. And the catalyst, well, we can have three possible catalysts here. We can have nickel, which is the more common answer, but we can also have platinum, or you can say palladium. Any one of those three answers would be correct for the catalyst. And that's one mark for the reagent, one mark for the catalyst. For part two, draw the displayed formula of compound Y. So this is looking at this particular reaction. And this, hopefully you recognise, is an oxidation to a diol. So remember, a diol being having two OH groups. So our formula is going to be adding the OH groups across the double bond. So I'm going to draw out my three carbons. I have my CH3 that hasn't changed, my hydrogens, but I've broken the double bond and this is where my OHs add. And that's one mark for that structure, making sure to show very clearly that the bond is between the carbon and the oxygen. If you draw that, that is wrong. If you draw that, that is also wrong. You have to show that the carbon and the oxygen is where the bond is present. And for part three, we want to draw the skeletal formula of the major product Z. So when we're adding in HCl, this is an electrophilic addition reaction. And we need to think about what the steps are for this and what we make. And this requires the formation of a carbocation. And because we want to focus on the major product, we need to think about the two carbocations that we're going to form here. So we could potentially form the carbocation where we add the hydrogen onto the first carbon and it goes in the centre, or we can form the carbocation where the hydrogen goes on to the middle carbon and the positive charge is on the end. And we need to remember which one is more stable. So this top one is our secondary carbocation, whereas the bottom one is our primary. And we need to remember that secondary are always the more stable. So that's going to be the major product. So if this is my major product, I'm going to be adding in the chlorine into here. So I need to think about how would I then draw that as a skeletal formula? Well, I've got my three carbons like that. Remember each edge or each change in direction is a carbon. And then I'm going to have in the center, my chlorine being added there because this requires the secondary carbocation in order to make the major product. Now we're going to move on to part B, where it tells us some information about the, the reaction of ethene. So this reacts with steam in the presence of a catalyst to form ethanol, and it's talking about the mechanism. So this is an example of an electrophilic addition reaction. You've not seen this mechanism in terms of the electrophilic addition, but you have seen an electrophilic addition. You used the addition of a hydrogen halide or the halogen mechanism. This is exactly the same. The only difference is this time we're adding water, but the steps are identical. So we want to complete 
the mechanism. So they've given us the vast majority of it and we want to add the curly arrows and the relevant dipole. So we know that we must have a dipole here and we know that this carbon-carbon double bond is an area of high electron density. And if this is an area of high electron density, it means that it attracts electrophiles. And an electrophile is something that either has a delta positive or a positive charge. So we're going to have our hydrogen as delta positive and our oxygen as delta negative because we have the hydrogen being attracted to this double bond. So then now I'm just going to remove this arrow just so we don't get confused about what ones are curly arrows. Now we're going to draw our curly arrows. So we have the curly arrow coming from the carbon-carbon double bond to the hydrogen. That's the formation of our carbon-hydrogen bond. And the two electrons that are in this bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen, they have a curly arrow to go on to the oxygen. This forms our carbocation because we've added this hydrogen from the water and we have been left with an OH minus. Now this OH minus is obviously going to be attracted to this positive carbocation and they've drawn the lone pair for us and we have the lone pair attacking in at the carbon that is positive here. And that then forms a bond between the carbon and the, the oxygen and that gives you your alcohol that you're going to form in this reaction. So we've got three curly arrows to add plus a dipole. Part two, again, is a question that you've never seen before, you've, but you have seen similar, where it's asking about predicting the shape with reference to the positively charged carbon and justifying your answers. This is another way to look at bond angles to look at shapes of molecules and looking at bond pairs and lone pairs. Now we don't have to say the actual angle, but we can figure it out sort of looking here. We know that around this carbon, they are going to have two electrons between the carbon hydrogen. So there's one bond pair, two electrons between the other carbon hydrogen. There's a second bond pair and a third bonding pair between the two carbons. So I've got three bonding pairs and no lone pairs. So I think back to my shapes of molecules and in particular any that have three bonding pairs and zero lone pairs, this is going to be trigonal planar. Now it may not look trigonal planar in the diagram that they've drawn but they've purposely done that. They don't want you to predict the shape by looking at the way they've drawn it they're basically saying, we've not drawn it correctly, what should it be drawn as? And it's trigonal planar and we have to say why, and it's because we have three bond pairs and zero lone pairs around the central carbon. Remember your bond pairs and lone pairs are always around the center atom and in this case it's the carbon and whenever we have any sort of question about shapes of molecules we always have to use the term arranging to minimize repulsion or maximize separation every single time there is no excuse for forgetting that it is why we have these shapes of molecules it is the basis of vesper which is our valence shell electron pair repulsion theory so the bond pairs arrange around the atom to minimize repulsion or you can say to maximize separation. Either one is perfectly acceptable. Most people will go with minimize repulsion but maximize separation is also perfectly acceptable. There are your three marks. One for the shape, one for the how you know it's that shape and then one for the justification. Now let's look at the last part of this question. So we've got methyl 2 methyl propenoate has this structure. Now some people will get to this point and they will panic because they will look at that structure and think, I've never seen that before. I have no idea what that is. 
that is okay. You're not expected to know what this molecule is. That's not the purpose of the question. This is a critical thinking question, as we've seen multiple times throughout this particular paper. They want you to take something that you already know and apply it to an unfamiliar question. And then what they want you to do here is they want you to draw a polymer that is formed from this. So they're just looking for you to draw an addition polymer. And you know that it must be an addition polymer because you have this carbon-carbon double bond. It makes no difference what these four things attached to the carbon-carbon double bond are. You literally just draw them exactly as they are given. Your focus should be on the carbon-carbon double bond. And whenever you're drawing out a polymer, you should do two things. You should remove the double bond and you must add extension bonds. You must show that your polymer is extended beyond this. And we want to show two repeat units here. So we're not putting any square brackets. We're not putting an N. We are simply showing what happens when two of these join. So I'm going to draw out my first part of the polymer. And you can see I've removed the double bond and I've drawn everything else exactly the same. No other changes apart from removing the double bond. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a second molecule. Drawing it out identical, but removing the double bond. To fill the polymer, we then combine these two things together. And it doesn't matter if you have a really long bond here. It doesn't need to be perfectly sized bonds all the way through. So it makes no difference that this middle one is longer. Don't worry about that. As long as it's clear that these two monomers are breaking their double bonds and joining together. That would get you the first mark. The second mark comes from adding in the extension bonds. You must show that this is just one small section of your polymer that has been removed and contains these two repeat units. So you have to have these extension bonds going out either side. And that is what gets you the second mark. That's everything for question 23, which is a 13 mark question on alkenes. And that is the last question in the paper. So we went through the multiple choice and each of the different questions, and you can find all of those different videos on this playlist. Hopefully you found this walkthrough very useful. If you've got any questions, please do feel free to leave a comment below and check back later for walkthroughs for the remaining five papers in the A-Level Chemistry.